You can go, Miss Miho. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to our audience from all around the world. Thank you for joining the Global Services Forum 2021, which will be discussing on services-led transformation for post-pandemic recovery. My name is Miho Shirotori. I am the officer in charge of the Division on International Trade and Commodities of ANCTAD. The Global Services Forum 2021 is one of the pre-events of the 15th Ministerial Conference of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, or ANCTAD 15, which is hosted by the government of Barbados. This forum is organized jointly with nine powerful partners, which are UN ECLAC, UNIDO, Barbados Coalition of Service Industries, Caribbean Export Development Agency, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung Regional Program Adela, Latin American Association of Services Exporters, Latin American and Caribbean Network of Researchers and Policymakers on Services, Sound Diplomacy, and University of the West Indies. Collectively, we hope this high-level session kickstarts the three days of productive meetings to increase awareness on the role of services in economic diversification. Allow me to share a few words now on housekeeping. If you have joined us directly on Zoom, you can choose to listen to this session either in English, in Spanish, or in French by selecting the suitable option on the bottom part of your screen. We are also delighted that the interpretation in international sign language is made available. With this note, I am pleased to welcome Ms. Rebecca Greenspan, the new Secretary General of ANCTAD, to give us the opening remarks. Ms. Greenspan has had a career spanning many years at high level positions. Prior to her ANCTAD appointment, she was the Ibero American Secretary General. She was also a former Under Secretary General of the United Nations and associated an associate administrator of the UN Development Program. Prior to joining the United Nations, Ms. Greenspan served as Vice President of Costa Rica from 1994 to 1998. She was also Minister of Housing, Minister, of Co Minister Coordinator of Economic and Social Affairs, and Deputy Finance Minister. Without further ado, let us hear Ms. Greenspan's opening remarks. Please start. Dear co-organizers, policymakers, and academics, distinguished panelists and participants, colleagues at ANCTAD, dear friends, I am pleased to give you a warm welcome to the fifth Global Services Forum 2021 and to this high-level session on services-led transformation for post-pandemic recovery. In this, only my second week as Secretary General of ANCTAD. This forum is one of the pre-events for ANCTAD 15, a conference that seeks to become one of the key shaping stones of the global multilateral response to this terrible pandemic. Because let me be clear about this, ANCTAD has to be part of the international response because we are uniquely positioned to channel the voices, the hopes, and the specificities of developing countries around the world. This Global Services Forum 2021 aims to build up the global debate on the role of services and services trade in facilitating the economic transformation necessary for an inclusive and sustainable recovery, so that we not only build back better, but also build back differently and build back better 
together. For the moment, we are building back apart. As the Trade and Development Report we released last week states, we are in the midst of a large economic recovery of around 5.3% in world GDP. But this figure is the average of increasingly divergent recovery paths around the world, with rich countries growing at a rate that multiplies those of some developing regions. In a word, this is a recovery that is leaving many people behind. I must, I must take this opportunity to thank all the distinguished panelists and all the participants in this event, as well as the co-organizers of the forum, without whom none of this would have been possible. Thank you to ECLAC, to UNIDO, the Latin American Association of Services Exporters, the Barbados Coalition of Service Industries, the Caribbean Export Development Agency, the Conrad Adenauer Regional Program ADELA, the Latin American and Caribbean Network of Researchers and Policymakers on Services, Sound Diplomacy, and the University of the West Indies. Dear friends, we stand at a critical moment in the history of multilateralism. The COVID-19 pandemic has proved to be one of the largest challenges of our generation, producing immense setbacks in the hard-won progress in reducing poverty and inequality that we had witnessed in previous decades around the world. The health crisis is not over and many developing regions are seriously facing the prospect of another lost decade, exactly at the time when efforts towards achieving the 2030 Agenda should be coming into full gear. One of the greatest lessons this pandemic has given us is that where there is inequality, there is fragility, and when shocks come, gaps widen, and those that were already suffering suffer the most. This is why we must always fight against inequality and fragility, because in a world where shocks are increasingly common, what we call progress today might turn out to be a mirage tomorrow. That's why we say that shocks should not shock us any longer, and that we have to introduce resilience as an integral part of our sustainable development efforts. This is why services, service trade, and service-led structural change are so important. The COVID-19 pandemic reconfirmed that the lack of economic diversification in a country can be the root cause of its vulnerability to shocks. When shocks affect key external income earning sectors, such as tourism, jobs evaporate, trade plunges, and people suffer. Small island development states or seats are a case in point. According to the 2020 edition of UNCTAD's Development and Globalization, facts and figures in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, seats suffered an estimated 70% drop in a travel receipts in 2020. Imagine the magnitude of the economic shock they suffered against the fact that services exports contributed on average 25% of seats GDP and almost half of their exports consist of income from tourism. To rise from inequality and vulnerability to prosperity for all, as is the theme of UNCTAD 15, we need economic diversification that is greener and more inclusive. And this has important implications for the theme that brings us together today. Services sectors play a critical transformative role in achieving greener and more inclusive diversification. Many services, such as transport, energy, finance, provide key linkages and inputs to many productive activities, including those 
of the manufacturing and agricultural sectors. Major industrial firms internalize critical services such as R&D, marketing and communications within their business oper operations, making them more productive, more resource efficient and more able to benefit from global value chains, especially if we can link small and medium-sized businesses. Indeed, in a 2017 UNCTAD report on services and structural transformation, we highlighted that services accounted for two-thirds of total productivity growth in developing economies between 1991 and 2013. But there is another reason we should focus on services as an essential source of transformation for post-pandemic recovery. The digital economy that has a large footprint in the services sector, and this includes the possibility of remote learning and working, areas that proved their importance during last year's lockdowns and that will become increasingly important in the near term in the context of the fourth industrial revolution and the future of work. Dear friends, let me close by sharing with you what we hope to achieve here. At this Global Services Forum, in eight separate events over the next three days, we will hold a global debate on how to make use of this potential of the services sector to achieve economic transformation for a sustainable and inclusive recovery. For example, we'll be examining how ICT services and digitalization are transforming the economy, trade and societies, or, or how services related to the green, blue and orange economy can facilitate inclusive recovery via, among other things, tourism. And, uh, and we will be answering important questions such as how can trade promote service-led transformation and economic diversification in developing countries. The task ahead is great. I wish you all the greatest success. And I look forward to your outputs and their contribution to UNCTAD 15. Much hinges on what we can achieve here. I ask you to be empowered by the recognition that each and every one of you are in a unique position to help now that the world needs you more than ever. Thank you so much. I thank Secretary General Greenspan for setting the scene for discussion today and the next two days. With this note, let me hand over to Mr. Ms. Kayman Kaymar Jordan, who will be moderating today's session. Ms. Jordan, the editor-in-chief of the Jamaica Gleaner, is a highly qualified communication specialist. Before the current position, she launched her own media consultancy firm, and prior to that, she served for five years as CEO and editor-in-chief of the Barbados' first online multimedia platform, Barbados Today. She also served as editor-in-chief of the Nation uh, Publishing Company and as director of News and Current Affairs of the Caribbean Media Corporation, the successor to CANA. Ms. Jordan will take us through the message from the panel. Kema, please take the floor. Thank you so much, Ms. Chayotori. And of course, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to what we hope to be a very exciting session entitled Global Services Forum on Services-Led Transformation for Post-Pandemic Recovery. Sounds quite heavy, but we expect to unpack it as we go through this session. And as the Secretary General would have indicated in her opening remarks, this high-level forum is, of course, a pre-event to the 15th Ministerial Conference of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD. But why, you might ask, the focus today on services as we look to get out of what is the worst global pandemic of this generation? 
It is because services are an essential component for achieving sustainable growth. They also represent two thirds of global output or more than half of the total employment in the world. And they account for about a quarter of world trade. Furthermore, services that are enabled by information and communication technology, ICT, play a key role in achieving structural transformations. So as we look at post-pandemic recovery, services must have a central position in the strategy for sustainable and inclusive recovery. Today, we zero in on three major questions as we consider the way forward for us all. Number one, how can trade promote the transformative role of services in economic diversification and structural transformation, including by their direct effects and by their contribution to all economic sectors? Two, in which way can the international trading system support trade policy in enabling the services-led transformation? And three, what should countries do to benefit from the transformative potential of the ICT services enabled digital economy? Very weighty questions. And for that, we have a weighty and distinguished panel. First, to weigh in on the discussion, Ms. Sandra Husbands. Ms. Sandra Husbands, is a woman with a passion for human development and enterprise success. She holds the portfolio of minister in the Ministry of Foreign Trade in Barbados. By profession, she is a management consultant. She's worked in broadcasting, sales, and marketing, as well as market research, tourism, public relations, and total quality management. Additionally, she is trained in adult learning, facilitation, business process management, and total quality management. Ms. Sandra Husbands holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology and Law and a Master's in International Trade Policy. She's passionate about governance and being able to build strong economic and social platforms which enable people to live their best lives. In other words, she's more than qualified to begin this discussion with us today. So I now have a video message from the Honorable Sandra Husbands. Thank you, moderator. Permit me to express my gratitude for being afforded the opportunity to share my views today on how trade policy and the trading system can enable a services-led economic transformation and diversification. I bring you heartfelt greetings on behalf of the government and people of Barbados. I've chosen to address you from the perspective of services and, not services or, as well as services the great equalizer we are all aware that covid19 has had a monumental impact on trading services especially the movement of natural persons there has been a similar impact on trading goods barbados was not excluded having recorded double digit contractions in the level of output both in respect of trading goods and trading services I need not qualify given our reliance on tourism and related activities. If we do not break the back of COVID-19 and find some kind of normalcy, we will not be able to stabilize our economies and take advantage of the opportunities that are promised. As a small open economy with limited natural resources, we've invested very heavily in our human resources. As such, the services sector is of paramount importance to the attainment of sustainable development goals. We have long realized that it cannot be an alternative to trading goods. To this end, trade policy strategies must ensure that trading services complements the activities of other tradable sectors and seek to maximize how services can support the value-added activities. We must successfully marry the two to achieve the best economic outcome in terms of increased levels of employment, contribution to GDP, diversification, and export markets. It must lead to greater prosperity. For small island developing states, such as Barbados, trade in services removes the perceived limitations due to size, location, and lack of natural resources. However, what is promised will not come to fruition if we cannot continue to unlock the vision, potential, and the creativity of individuals. 
Persons must be able to see the possibilities that exist and have the boldness to seize them if they are to go beyond the geographical border. In addition, COVID-19 has removed the physical confines of office spaces, thereby reducing the cost of producing services. This opens new possibilities to broaden participation for small economies in remote locations with high transport costs. With technology, services can expand significantly across territories, minimizing the movement of persons. However, unlike goods, the quality dimension is driven by the service employee himself. Therefore, the individual must have the internal focus and skills to deliver impeccable quality levels of service time and time again. Governments and the private sector have dedicated roles to play. Yes, we are aware that governments have to put the enabling environment in place through which trade is facilitated. That enabling environment has, however, changed significantly in light of COVID. We have to ensure that we are on the cutting edge of encouraging new norms and customs, enacting up-to-date laws, regulations, and policies, negotiating mutually beneficial international trade agreements, and putting in place appropriate public infrastructure that continues to support trade. The government and businesses are relying more heavily now than ever before on technology. Barbados has already been working on digitizing its services and processes when the full impact of COVID-19 began to be realized Technology has become a basic tool and a game changer and presents an opportunity for many. Governments now have to consider information technology as a social or public good. Access by all is critical if we are to ensure that all categories of our populations can benefit and have opportunities which can accrue to them in the area of services. Developing countries, therefore, must find the resources to enable their populations to engage information technology, just as we do for water, education, and health care. The IT agenda has been fast-tracked to the extent that available resources permit. This agenda includes ensuring that we have adequate numbers of persons trained in this area to support demands for IT services at the domestic level, as well as to supply services to countries and persons abroad. The approach to education, therefore, has to be revolutionized. We have seen new offerings in the areas of coding and robotics in our secondary schools here in Barbados, as well as other subjects such as green engineering. There is the opportunity for increased collaboration between and among countries in order to pool limited resources and increase opportunities for capacity building. This will also lend itself to increasing the number of persons who can be trained. The provision of services will support the expansion of business in other sectors as well as through online presence and the effective use of e-commerce platforms. This potentially broadens participation in the emerging economic sectors by the ordinary citizen and thus participating and benefiting from wealth creation. Access to these platforms may seem simple to many. However, unilateral and coercive measures severely impact the ability of businesses to access these facilities or to even obtain bank accounts in external jurisdictions. When coupled with other challenges which SIDS face, the impact of unilateral and coercive measures taken by other countries on trade and development efforts of countries is crippling. I now turn my attention to the digital space, a place where there is a wealth of information for persons to contribute and explore. And by digital space, I'm including social media, an ally or at times a foe, and one of the most powerful means of information sharing. It has a tremendous following which must be able to sift through what is before them in order to see what is relevant and that which is not. We have to encourage persons to engage in the creation of content to demonstrate as well as preserve our cultural identity and traditional folklore. 
government policy must develop initiatives which move people past entertainment and consumption on the internet to creation and commerce. We must be able to digitize and not lose our cultural identity. Cultural identity and abilities are critical for it is out of these creative thinking takes place. If we are imitating, we cannot properly innovate because the confidence and the mindset for viewing from non-traditional angles will be blunted and this will create a lag. Educational strategies then which foster innovation and critical thinking are necessary if we are to bolster trade and provide the base from which innovation and execution can successfully take place. We need all persons to be thinkers, creative, curious, and innovative. Small states cannot respond with the same speed and agility as larger countries given our very limited financial resources. So our efforts at the multilateral level must ensure that we have the policy space to take remedial and developmental actions which are necessary to support trade in services and not run afoul of our obligations. Our share of trade is minimal and in no way distorts world trade. Careful planning and coordination is necessary as we engage in trade negotiations at different levels, lest we erode the gains which can accrue due to increased levels of trade in services. Agreements have to be appropriately crafted in order that we do benefit or are no worse off from their implementation. Recognition of the differences in size, development and ability to respond must be taken into account in the development of these arrangements if all are to participate successfully in the multilateral trading system. We also have to adhere to the rules to which we all subscribe and which form the basis of all trading arrangements. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure to share these few thoughts with you and I wish you a successful forum. Thank you so much there, the Honorable Minister from Barbados, Sandra Husbands, Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Trade, um, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Barbados. And of course, some of the key points for you to hold on to from what she said is that if we do not break the back of COVID-19, we will not be able to stabilize our economy. That goes without saying across the board. She's also making a particular case for SIDS, which are particularly vulnerable and need special consideration within the context of global discussions. The private sector and governments domestically, however, still have their part to play in terms of dealing with um, being on the cutting edge of change, enacting new laws, trade agreements, better infrastructure, ICT as a public good and having access for all, which is critical. So a good stage set there and we thank the Honorable Minister from Barbados proposing ideas as well to help us with the transformation that we're talking about and that we yearn so much for. I now move on to Andres Valenciano Yamuna. Andres Valenciano Yamuna was sworn in as the Minister of Foreign Trade of Costa Rica. So he's the Costa Rican counterpart of the Honorable Sandra Husbands. And he was sworn in on, October, on November 24, 2020. He is responsible for Costa Rican foreign trade policies and attraction of foreign investment, as well as the representation before several multilateral organizations, such as the WTO and the OECD. Mr. Yamuna has over 15 years of professional experience. He is an industrial engineer who graduated from the University of Costa Rica with a master's degree in, in, in international business from the Fletcher School Tufts University in the United States of America, and he's a Lee Kuan Yew School Senior Fellow from the National University of Singapore. He has led research studies and projects related to social and economic development in over 12 countries in three continents. Before becoming minister, he was the executive president of the Instituto Nacional de Aprendizaje, where he was in charge of technical and vocational education in the country. Mr. Yamuna was awarded as one of the 40 under 40 for contributions to Costa Rican society in 2013 and is part of the Advisory Council of the State of the Nation program. So we have great pleasure 
in welcoming him to offer his contribution at this stage. Greetings to everyone, and thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to share Costa Rica's experience and some thoughts about the future of trading services. We welcome that UNCTAD has taken the lead um, discussion on this matter as we all work together to build back better. As you know, Costa Rica has been a, an enthusiastic support of the multilateral system and has consolidated a trade platform based on multilateral and regional trade agreements with partners all around the world. We have negotiated deep integration agreements that cover more than just goods. They also establish the rules on services, investment, competition, the environment, and government procurement, to name a few. And all of this has been key as a driver for foreign direct investment in the services sector, which in turn has resulted in a complete economic transformation, diversification, and sophistication during the last two decades. And this su success has not been a coincidence. Costa Rica has built this platform on strong pillars of public policy that have invested in universal healthcare, education, protection of the environment, and a consolidation of our democracy during the last 200 years. Costa Rica can serve as an example of the structural transformation an economy can have when it diversifies its exports in favor of services. And this change is heavily um, shown in two key indicators, both the rebalancing of shares in terms of services in total exports and of how the composition of services has changed itself. Over the last three decades, Costa Rica has shifted from producing mainly a few agricultural goods to a prevalence of services in our economy. And this now accounts for over three quarters of our GDP uh, in 2019 and now employs close to 77% of our workforce. We are very well known for tourism, but we are also now a leader in Latin America of modern services in terms of our exports. And they are also represent a very important source of our FDI, which has closely averaged 25% during the last 10 years. And this has been um, a, su a success, success because we've been able to invest not only in human talent, but making sure we have a, a good regulatory environment with low barriers to entry for modern services. This has been a key driver, not only in our shifting trend toward services, but also our goods have been increasing in terms of the number of countries that they reach. And we have moved now to exporting over 4,000 products to all around the world. This has helped a very strong transformation of our economy because it provided opportunities to create linkages with local businesses, has promoted entrepreneurship innovation for the services industry to solve good related challenges. So we are no strangers to this trend of servicification that has been going on since the early 2000s. And thanks to all this diversification, we were very resilient in terms of how we responded to the COVID-19 crisis. We were able to have an uninterrupted participation in global value chains and record-breaking numbers in terms of projects attracted um, to invest in our country and to generate employment. Now we're asking ourselves, how can we make sure we redesign our value proposition towards a new era of sustainable productivity after COVID-19? And as a small open economy, Costa Rica is very exposed to global trends. That's why we need to make sure that we are very prepared to future, future challenges that our interconnected um, world um, presents to every country. We know that to better prepare ourselves, uh, having more participation of services in our economy allows us to recover faster and better from a crisis. So we need to make sure that that is incorporated into broader policy objectives, such as action against climate change and the digitalization of the economy. For example, we are negotiating the agreement on climate change, trade and sustainability, which compromises a very important component around environmental services. But we're also incorporating in trade agreements standards related that can help us nourish the digital economy and boost the wellness tourism industry. 
So to finish, Costa Rica and countries around the world need to understand that those trade policies can't be isolated from other actions um, that have a broader perspective on the development of the country. So we need to continue improving connectivity so it reaches everyone in the country. We need to upgrade and reskill and retool our labor force. We need to promote migration policies that target visitors and permanent residents so they can contribute to our local economy. And we need to follow international best practices. Now, as members of the OECD, we want to make sure that we're using the most out of the policy tools to make sure that our economy can uh, be better prepared for future events. Also, Costa Rica will continue supporting the efforts to strengthen the WTO as we recognize it's an important player that needs to make sure that countries all around the world have the necessary support for this transition towards a more services-based economy. We look forward to continue working to all of you, with all of you to make sure that trade works as a tool for sustainable and inclusive development. Thank you. Thank you so much, the Honorable Andres Valenciano Yamuna. And clearly he's saying that Costa Rica is an example for the rest of the world to follow in terms of making that transition to services with now three quarters of GDP and 70% of the workforce um, tied up in the services economy. The country also has a good regulatory environment with low barriers to entry, but he accepts that some, works, some work still needs to be done in terms of upgrading, retooling and reskilling the workforce and of course following global best practices. So thank you so much for that contribution as we continue to look at the topic before us today in terms of building resilience in the midst of a global pandemic. We now move on to our next presenter, Ambassador Margarita Rosa da Silva Aizata, the permanent representative of Angola. A little bit about her before we let her come to the microphone. Ambassador Margarita Aizata was appointed as permanent representative of the Republic of Angola, the United Nations office in Geneva in May, 2018. In 2020, she was the African group coordinator for UNCTAD. She was, also, she was also appointed by the president of the Human Rights Council gender focus point for cases of sexual and gender-based harassment. In 2019, she was the African Group Coordinator for Human Rights Issues and Vice President of the ILO Centenary Conference. Prior to her appointment to Geneva, Mrs. Aizata has been serving as the Director of Multilateral Affairs at the Ministry of External Affairs since 2008. She has been a member of the Angolan delegations to the UNGA since 1989. She was also the national coordinator of the Intersectorial Committee for drafting national reports on human rights issues for five years. Mrs. Aizata served as minister counselor at the permanent mission of Angola to the United Nations in New York from 1998 to 2004. She joined the Ministry of External Relations in 1985 after graduating from 1977 to 1981 at the Academy of Economic Sciences of Bucharest, Romania. She also gets a master's degree from 2003 to 2004 in prevention and resolution of conflict at the Ignatius University in New York, a joint program with the Sofia University of Bulgaria. So very much acclaimed and very much um, experienced and having the credentials to speak on the topic before us today. So we say welcome to Mrs. Margarita Rosa da Silva Aizata. Good morning, everybody. Her Excellency, Ms. Rebecca Greenspan, Secretary General of UNCTAD. Her Excellency, Ms. Sandra Husbands, Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Barbados, His Excellency Mr. Andres Valenciano, Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Trade of Costa Rica, Excellencies. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this timely and important high-level pre-event of UNTAD 15, 
under the watch of the Global Services Forum 2021 on services-led transformation for post-pandemic recovery. Services are often an explored component of strategies on economic diversification, structural transformation and trade policies building productive capacity, among others. Today, one can see that for any level of economic development, the role of services in the economy has become more important than it was in the past as a result of technological changes in information communication and other industries aggravated by the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. It is important for economies to follow a balanced growth path because of the explicit and implicit linkages between the various sectors. Therefore, policymakers need to consider more carefully what specific actions deserve priority. Even when, for example, promoting manufacturer exports is the top priority, the answer can actually be found in trade in services policy. According to UNCTAD, trade policy has been a crucial driver of success in all of the service sectors, including trade liberalization, furthermore, fosters FDI in developing countries. This inflow of FDI is a key channel for international provision of services and often brings capital skills and managerial, managerial know-how to developing countries, as well as a mechanism through which high, higher quality, lower cost services, improve total factor productivity, TFP, of firms that use services relatively more intensively. Although policy makers in LDCs do not regard trade in services as a prime focus of action on economic transformation, trade in services is playing an increasingly important role in economic transformation in LDCs by supporting exports, product change, and value chain development a key channel through which countries can exploit their comparative advantages. Opening trade and investment in services is an important channel for improving service performance to foreign competition. It is also a source of new knowledge and new products that can have a major impact on the productivity and thus the competitiveness of many firms in the economy. Information and communication technologies. Liberalization can be important for improving the competitiveness of services exports. Reducing trade and investment barriers to services is one important way of introducing such competition, particularly when the size of the market is likely to limit the numbers of efficient domestic competitors. competitors. Last but not least, the existence of preferential market access schemes, such as a generalized system of preferences and duty-free, quota-free access for LDCs is crucial. In this context, we commend UNCTAD for the efforts in providing its expertise 
to assist Angola and LDCs in general on leveraging services to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation as well. Of course, stressing there the importance for countries to follow a balanced growth path due to the linkages of the various sectors of the economy. So even while we stress services, we have to give the relevant um, attention to manufacturing and other areas that impact on the services sector. Trading services is critical, uh, especially for LDCs, and we must keep the age-old question of preferential access and quota-free access on the agenda as this affects the ability of the less developed countries to compete globally. So thank you very much for that contribution. And we now move on to our next speaker who's coming to us by video message. Mr. Yao Sun is currently the, the Deputy Director of the Executive Committee Office for China's International Fair for Trade in Services, responsible for the daily work in the office. He's also the Director of Beijing Investment Promotion Service Center, responsible for the investment promotion and attractions in Beijing. He was previously the head of the Planning and Finance Division of the Beijing Municipal Foreign Economic Relations and Trade Commission, the head of the Foreign Trade Planning and Finance Division of Beijing Municipal Commerce Bureau, the head of the Finance Division of the Beijing Municipal Commission of Commerce, as well as the Deputy Director of the Commission. Since 2018, he has been the Deputy Director of the Beijing Municipal Commerce Bureau, responsible for trade and development in Beijing and the convention and exhibition industry in Beijing. He's also received the professional title of Senior International Business Engineer. He received his master's degree at the Jilin University of Technology in Administrative Engineering and pursued further studies at the University of Gaison in Germany from 1993 to 1994. So we continue with our expert panel here, and now we hear via video message the contribution from Mr. Yao Sun. Honorable Miss Isabella Durant, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, greetings to you all. It's a great pleasure to attend the fifth Uncle Tight Global Service Forum via video link. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my sincere thanks to Uncle Tai, on behalf of the Executive Committee Office for China International Fair for Trade in Services, short for CIFTIS. It's highly appreciated that Ms. Isabella Durant, the Deputy Secretary General of Uncle Tai, made a speech at the summit of 2021 CIFTIS. The Chinese government attaches great importance to the development of the service industry and trade in services, and has adopted various measures to accelerate the innovation-driven development of the service industry to support and guide economic transformation and upgrading. As the largest comprehensive exhibition in the field of service trade, CIFTIS, together with the China International Import Expo and the Canton Fair, constitutes the three major exhibition platforms for China's opening to the outside world. CIFTIS has been held for eight sessions since its first hosting in 2012, covering 12 major fields of trade in services. The 2021 CIFTIS was made a success from September 2nd to 7th, bringing together political, business, and academic elites, exchanging views on and discussing such topics as trade in services and digital trade and building consensus. In the meantime, new forms and models of digital trade, 5G communications, industrial internet of things, and blockchain innovation were demonstrated. More than 10,000 companies from 153 countries and regions registered as online and in-person exhibitors and participants, concluding with 
1,672 different types of achievements. The 2021 CIFTIS had provided precious business opportunities for companies worldwide and reflect China's determination to continue to expand opening up. Uncle Tide plays an increasingly important role in promoting global dialogue, assisting in formulating services trade policies. In addition, Uncle Tide is also a supporting institution of safety. Next year, Uncle Tide will organize the 2022 safety with us. Currently, we are preparing for the establishment of a global alliance for trade in services, the SCATIS. It's a non-profit international organization, voluntarily formed by business or industry associations, companies, enterprises, and professional institutions. The preparatory meeting for GATIS was held successfully in Beijing on September 7th. Again, I would like to express my gratitude to Uncle Tide for its considerable support. Gates and Uncle Tide both agree to promote the sustainable development of trade in services. Both sides are willing to strengthen cooperation to promote the sustainable, balanced, and inclusive growth of global trade in services. The GSF is an essential platform launched by Uncle Tide to convene global policymakers, industry experts, and scholars to exchange and discuss ideas in the field of services trade. I believe that the forum will pull everyone's wisdom and promote exchanges and solicit suggestions from diverse perspectives, thereby contributing to the recovery and the transformation of the global service industry in the post-epidemic era. At last, I wish the forum a complete success. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yao Sun, speaking there and reminding us that global links are important, are important for this entire system to work, that we need to strengthen co uh, cooperation to achieve the transformation that is needed. And of course, the need for diverse perspectives. We all have a voice and we all need to be heard in this process. So from there, I want at this stage to thank all of our contributors so far. We've had an exciting um, session and some wonderful ideas in terms of what we need to do as we continue to focus on the recovery that's needed. If you're now joining us, we are, of course, discussing services-led transformation for post-pandemic recovery. And we would have heard at the very start from the Secretary General of UNCTAD that we need to build back better together. And of course, to do that, uh, we have to combat the recovery that is leaving many behind. We are going to continue. We have some more um, presenters for you. And at this time, it is really my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Winfried Weck. Weck. Sorry, Mr. Winfried Weck. And Mr. Winfried Weck was born in 1963 in Nuremberg, Germany. He is the director of the New Regional Program, Alliances for Democracy and Development with Latin America of the Comrade Adenauer Stiftung, based in Panama City. Before he worked as the coordinator on development and human rights policies, and as the head of the Team Agenda 2030, sustainable development at the CAS headquarters in Berlin. Having a scientific background as master on Islamic sciences and the modern Middle East, he started his professional career as advisor on development policy and international security questions at the headquarters of the Christian Democrat Party, the current governing party in Germany. In 1998, he changed CAS to a political foundation of the Christian Democrats in Germany and was sent to Lima as CAS country director to Peru until 2002. After heading the Department of Domestic Programs of CAS in Berlin, he was appointed to country director to Indonesia and East Timor, based in Jakarta, from 2006 until 2011, and to Ecuador in Quito from 2011 until 2014. So Mr. Weck has traveled around the region to come to us today 
to bring us his thoughts on this wonderful topic we have today. And we say welcome to him now. Thank you. Thank you, Kaima. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening once again uh, to all around the world. Uh, and welcome to the uh, UNCTAD 15 Global Services Forum 2021. As Kas Adela, we are really happy to be part of this uh, great event. And we want uh, to congratulate the main organizers, UNCTAD, RETLAS, uh, for all the efforts which were done in, um, before this event to make it, uh, to make it real. Um, Kas Adela is a, new, uh, is a new regional program. Usually, usually we work in countries. We have 107 uh, offices around the world. We have regional programs who usually work in their specific continents and our new program alliances for democracy and uh, development with Latin America. That means that we uh, try to connect our, um, our partners here in Latin America, our experts with their, the experts in Europe, Africa and Asia. Um, in this context, uh, we already are for several years partner of the Latin American network of services, RETLAS, the uh, Red Latinoamericano de Servicios, which is based at the headquarters of CEPAL, ECLAC, in Santiago de Chile. I do not want to compete now with the experts who already spoke because I, I'm not sure that I would give some new input. But what I want to stress is that uh, I remember very well when on 9th of March last year, the first COVID case uh, arrived in Panama. And within three weeks, the world has changed also in Panama. Since that time, we were uh, under strong uh, lockdowns, one of the strongest together with Peru in the world. Uh, we had uh, free time between the first and the second wave. You all know these things. But uh, two weeks ago, luckily, I can tell that, we had our first international physical event again. This was a small event on Central America uh, with uh, mayors from the Dominican Republic, from Costa Rica, from Guatemala, and from Panama. So after one and a half years, we were happy to go back to the new normal. Of course, all of us would have wished to visit Barbados, and it's a pity that we cannot be present. But I think after one and a half year, we all should try to get used to these new realities and to make real what, we, what was the normal thing for all of us in former times, in the pre-pandemic times. So we are now organizing several physical events on multilateralism. Um, this will take place in two weeks in Cartagena. We have a project uh, which is called Strategic Alliances Latin America Meeting Africa, the two neighbor continents, where we work on uh, female entrepreneurs and female uh, or women in top leading positions. We have a big event in November here with ministers, with vice presidents. Uh, and we also will do, for example, a workshop on global health uh, in Italy in our training center at the uh, Como Lake. What I want to tell with that, it's time to come back to normality, not only in services, not only in commerce, but also in our events. And I hope very much that next year or in two years, we meet on the same occasion, uh, physically, wherever it might be. Thank you very much and have Great, great time in this UNCTAD conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Weck. And of course, as a Barbadian, I think I speak for the Prime Minister and the Minister of Tourism, and we said we would love to have had you there in person right now. And you are right. We do need to get used to the new reality. And as you said, it's time, that is beyond time to come back to normality. So thank you so much for those wonderful words and for that insightful presentation. We are getting close to that hour when we have to wrap up. We're coming close to the close. Um, so I'm at this point going to introduce to you now for closing remarks, Mario Castello 
Astel Dio Lido. And of course, he is the Director of International Trade and Integration Division at the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean of the United Nations. Previously, he has served as Officer in Charge of the Gender Affairs Division, Head of the Innovation and New Technologies Unit, and coordinator of the ECLAT European Commission Initiative on the Information Society Dialogue in Latin America. So without further ado, Mr. Mario Castillo Astudillo. Muchas gracias, eh, Caimar, por la introducción. Quisiera dirigirme en, en, es, en español en esta en estas breves palabras de saludo, eh, bueno, en primer lugar eh, quisiera saludar y felicitar eh, a los distinguidos participantes de, de este panel transformación impulsada por los servicios para la recuperación postpandémica. Eh, es un placer eh, dirigirme desde CEPAL y eh, plantear que en primer lugar y creemos que este tema es de especial importancia y urgencia para América Latina y, y el Caribe en esta coyuntura, puesto que la reciente recuperación del comercio exterior de la región y en particular de los bienes ha estado asociado principalmente a una mejora de los precios de productos primarios y a un rebote temporal de la demanda de los principales socios comerciales. Y en sí, esta, esta recuperación es una buena noticia, sin embargo, está concentrada en pocos bienes y reducido mercado. Y es por eso que la región considera que la industria de servicio pasa a ser cada vez más un sector eh, estratégico. Eh, el comercio exterior de servicios y en particular las, las exportaciones de la región eh, han estado concentradas principalmente en la industria del turismo y del transporte y sin lugar a dudas ha tenido una contracción muy significativa durante el año 2020 y una recuperación parcial eh, durante el año 2021. Y es por ello que la mirada y la reflexión sobre los servicios modernos facilitados por medios digitales eh, representan una oportunidad eh, para reorientar eh, la actividad productiva de nuestros países y además poder eh, dinamizar el comercio exterior. Todos sabemos que en el contexto de la crisis del COVID ha actuado como un catalizador eh, de los servicios modernos y una transformación importante en los, en los ámbitos digitales. En el último periodo, el uso de las tecnologías eh, digitales en las instituciones de gobierno, en los sistemas de aprendizaje, en el trabajo, las compras en línea, la telemedicina, las industrias creativas han tenido un impulso importante y eso ha sido eh, positivo. Sabemos que en este proceso eh, son las grandes empresas principalmente las que han estado aprovechando esta transformación y por lo tanto el desafío es cómo incorporar a sectores más rezagados principalmente asociados a las pequeñas y medianas empresas para abordar estas oportunidades de la economía digital. Y es en ese contexto que como CEPAL, que como Comisión Económica para América Latina, hemos estado trabajando con diversos países. Y por supuesto aquí hemos escuchado la presentación de la ministra de Barbados, el ministro de Costa Rica, eh, también en alianza con la Conrad Adenauer, cómo efectivamente avanzar hacia una estrategia regional, más allá de las iniciativas nacionales asociadas al tema de servicios. Y ahí yo quisiera solo señalar el, el importante trabajo que se ha hecho en la agenda regional, la agenda ILAC eh, 2022, que es coordinada por CEPAL, y que 
tiene como objetivo el profundizar y catalizar un mercado digital regional. Y para ello, solamente mencionar que hay una agenda que se está trabajando con todos los países de la región en el ámbito de comercio electrónico y digital transfronterizo, las agenda de integración digital para la conectividad, la armonización normativa, el libre flujo de datos, eh, eh, la facilitación del comercio, la mejora de los servicios logísticos, etcétera, y los marcos normativos. Creemos que sin una plataforma regional y una coordinación regional y una visión de mercado regional, eh, no es posible eh, avanzar en, eh, en función de los objetivos que nos hemos planteado. Por ello, eh, que estamos convencidos que esta agenda eh, eh, que promueve eh, la economía digital puede ser un elemento importante eh, para una reactivación, una transformación y una incorporación eh, de las tecnologías digitales y servicios a amplios sectores de la población. Finalmente, para finalizar, Quiero bueno, agradecer a todos nuestros socios por los cuales hemos organizado esta, este webinar. Por supuesto a UNTA, eh, por supuesto al gobierno de Barbados, eh, a la Conrad de Nahue, bueno, y a las diferentes instituciones. Y, bueno, y desearles eh, una, un, un, una eh, fructífera... Eh, discusión en sus ámbitos institucionales, en el ámbito de los países, y por supuesto cuenten eh, como un CEPAL, con una institución que está disponible, una institución que ha estado acompañando a los equipos eh, de trabajo de los distintos países para poder avanzar en esta línea, en donde creemos que con ello podemos eh, consolidar una visión de desarrollo sostenible y e inclu e inclusiva. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Mario Castillo Astudillo. And of course, without a doubt, services are an essential component for achieving sustainable and inclusive growth. But as we've heard all morning, some are more vulnerable than others. It means therefore that we need to increase our global collaboration to respond to the unique challenges that we face and not just respond, but overcome them in the coming months and years. It's been my pleasure, absolute pleasure to guide you through this session this morning. I now have the pleasure as well to hand you over to Ms. Mayo Sayatori, who is going to conclude the session for us. And just, I know you met her earlier this morning at the introduction, but just to give you a little bit more about Mayo Sayatori, she is the rotating officer in charge of the Division on International Trade and Commodities and head of the Trade Negotiations and Commercial Diplomatic Branch of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. She leads a team that assesses sectors and creative industries impact upon social economic transformation. Her agency also serves as a secretariat to important trading frameworks and agreements including the generalized system of preferences and the global system of trade agreements among developing countries. Mayo holds a master's degree in economics from the London School of Economics and in public administration from Harvard University. So a very powerful woman to wrap this session up for us today. So over to you, Mayo. Thank you so much, Kema, for skillfully taking us through the panel today. And thank you very much, Winfried and Mario, for your very important remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, what we heard today helps us understand several options on how to use the potential of services for economic diversification. Pursuing these options will be critical for a resilient post-pandemic recovery. It was made clear that through their direct and indirect contributions to agriculture and manufacturing and all the economic activities, services can determine a country's export competitiveness, a country's productivity growth potential, and of course, economic diversification. 
the ICT services that power the digital economy are a very good example of this broad transformative potential of services. And also, as we have heard from the panel, trade policy and the trading system are very relevant to materialize this potential of servicification services and digitalization. Now, at this stage, allow me to invite you to different sessions that we are organizing in the following two days. There will be three sessions tomorrow. The first one, a high level event on create, innovate and recover digitalizing creative industries for a sustainable recovery in Africa. The second session on more resilient and sustainable tourism for the post pandemic recovery. And the third session on promoting the participation of developing regions in global information and communication technology enabled services trade. On Friday, 24 September, there will be a brainstorming workshop towards a new framework for services policy review, which I understand will be an invitation only event. And finally, a session on business opportunities in the new era of global services. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the high level session on behalf of all the organizers, I thank you again for your participation. The discussion will contribute or to UNCTAD 15 and our upcoming work through the Global Services Forum as the meeting point of a global services community. After this session, stay connected for approximately 30 minutes to see the Firefly cultural exhibition brought to us by the Barbados Coalition of Service Industries with the participation of performers from Barbados. Finally, I'd like to ask you to spend a few seconds to fill in a short survey. This will be shown on your screen when you leave the Zoom screen. This will help us tremendously to improve our future events. Once again, thank you to all, and a special thanks to the Conrad Adenauer and Stiftung for providing us with this Zoom platform and technical support, and to our wonderful interpreters in Spanish, French, and in the International Sign Language for making this session come true. Now, I declare the close of this session and over to the fiery exhibit. Thank you very much. My goodness, I'm so excited. Not only because I'm in Barbados, but guess what? It is all about the Firefly Cultural Exhibit 2021. And we're gonna do it a little bit different this year. It's gonna be virtual. We wanna keep everyone safe and also have an amazing time. Now this experience was designed for the Global Services Forum. Of course, brought to you by the Barbados Coalition of Service Industries. And before I forget to mention, yeah, guess what? Or how could I forget to mention, this is the Barbados Museum located within one one of UNESCO's World Heritage Properties. My name is Vane. I'm gonna be your host. We're gonna have an amazing time. Go ahead and get your cocktail, grab a drink, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna have some fun today.
Okay, okay, I hear you. Now, what is the BCSI? Now, the BCSI is a business support organization dedicated to the advancement of the services sector. Now, our aim is to enhance the export potential of service providers in Barbados. All right, all right, now it is time to get started. We're kicking it off with our virtual art gallery. And first up, we're starting with the curator of the art gallery. She's a contemporary artist. Her name is Alanis Ford. This painting is called Our Salvation, and it explores what it means to live in a paradise space a space that is seen as an escape or vacation for others outside of Barbados. What I'm trying to do is find my paradise, my escape, and in my work, I'm creating these paradisiacal landscapes and these imagined spaces where my proxy, which is this blue dotted figure that reoccurs in my work, lives and resides in. In this particular piece, Our Salvation, I am examining the tension between Barbados and the environment here and my proxy and in this piece I wanted to experiment and play around with the different materials so I'm, I'm using oil paint and glitter in this particular piece glitter in the way to create illusions and to hint more at the imagined spaces that I'm trying to bring to life I see glitter as a material that appears different in different lighting at different angles and I wanted to allow the viewer to feel like they're being transported into that my imagined paradise spaces. In this painting Insidious I wanted to create a self-portrait instead of using my proxy I, I used myself and I enclosed myself in the paradise space spaces that I'm creating and I wanted to by using a circle canvas I wanted to almost create a globe or a world in a way so to examine what happens when I leave this space and I, I go into the world and how I'm still, I can still be perceived as a Caribbean person, as someone from paradise based on my dialect, based on my look, based on my culture. So in this particular piece, the circle shape of the canvas was important because I wanted to examine the idea of me being away from Barbados, away from this paradise space. This piece is part of a triptych called Amalgamation. And for these particular works, I am examining and mixing together different materials and exploring how they work together or may not work together. I am trying to almost create these tiny miniature masks that steps away from the proxy that that is common and reoccurring in my work, which is the blue dotted figure. So I wanted to create a different aesthetic, a different look on how the proxy can evolve or, or change. So with this, I am using different tropical fabrics and beads and metallic cord and mixing all those together to create masks that will eventually find its way into my paintings and become their own proxies, their own beings. Coming up next, you have expressionist artist Brandon Best. Birthday Cake Boy. Birthday Cake Boy was created with the intention of showing what kind of context food could bring within a particular situation. So back in the lockdown of 2020, a lot of people spent their birthdays within lockdown or quarantine. And that is what this piece is showing, is showing a young man who's spending his birthday inside like a lot of other people were last year. And despite being in lockdown and the world being in the situation it was with the pandemic and all, 
we still uphold to certain traditions. So what's a birthday without having a cake, correct? So that is why the cake may not be as big and lavish as you may want it to be, but it still has an important role to play within the piece and within the context also. Giant Steps. Giant Steps is actually the very, very, very first painting on canvas that I ever worked on. It was created initially in 2016. The piece is all about a jazz musician's journey from going from the countryside to pursue their dreams of being a saxophone player in the big city. And this is despite coming from a troubled past. The whole point of the piece is to show that you can always elevate yourself and transition into something greater. You just have to make that decision for yourself. Service. Service is another mixed media piece just like Giant Steps, except it's based on my experience within working within hospitality. So it's very loud, it's jazzy, there's a lot going on within the piece, and there's drawing, which is actually my initial form of medium that I preferred before I became a uh, quote painter. And I love everything there is about the piece. It's rough, it's rigid, it's not too chaotic and it's just getting to the real feel of what it felt like to be working within a busy restaurant especially one in high standard Mila Mila is one of my favorite pieces for several reasons one it's one of the first pieces that I had done to that size 20, 24 by 30 inches it's another mixed media piece, however, it is just using acrylic paint and marker for drawing. Uh, the piece is based off of my girlfriend, Mila. This is about self-love and showing personality through color and form and through her big afro and also the sparkles and colors coming from her eyes. The piece was initially created for a Valentine's themed exhibition. Even though that exhibition never came to pass, uh, I still developed the piece to be the way it is. It may not be romantic, but it is again about ref self-reflection and self-love and how you perceive yourself versus how you are perceived by others. All right, thank you so much, Brandon. That was awesome. Coming up next, we have Donna Haynes. Now, she's an expressive performative artist. Her work will be accompanied by spoken word artist Cindy Celeste, whose poem Paradox is inspired by this collection. Where I am from, it is illegal to wear camouflage. We are punished for wearing patterns we are not entitled to, but around here, it's also true that it's taboo to not blend in. Here, we are pressured into wearing our skin the way that has long lingered on in external expectation, hiding the shapes and shadows comprising the complexities of our complexions, even if, when we see our reflection, it is at odds with our personal perception. We are supposed to make modifications in order to fit the mold. We limbo, finding ourselves lost between instinct and influence between authenticity and acceptance, feeling alien on the inside but needing outside validation. We are cursed to live this paradox of an existence in a constant state of crisis, to decide whose approval should be more relevant, self-adorning for adoration and admiration, but the blight of self-expression is that there's no right place to be on the spectrum. Hate yourself for fitting in too much. Be hated for sticking out like a sore thumb. Either way, to skew too far in either direction creates a problem. We ask ourselves, am I accepted now? By whom? Wonder which version of us is least at risk for ridicule. Question whether we have room to bloom in all of the colors that we want to without having to assume the costume of the imposter to what fate are we relegated to if we do not neatly fit the frame that everyone is accustomed to 
if we choose to refuse to fake the same brand of society's outlandishness, what if we wish to shed the filter-ready facade in favor of the face that we are most comfortable with? Right. Thank you so much, Donna. That was beautiful. Now, closing the virtual gallery today is Vaughn Hall, who is a member of local art group PM Splash. Now, his work is also accompanied by Cindy Celeste, whose poem Illustria is inspired by his collection. <laughs> What if people were like picture books? What if we could stare down the stories stored and captured in stills they took from their lived experience? If we could take a look through their lifetimes by perusing their personal pages, how far would we let our gazes penetrate? What if every single person is an entire album of trial and tribulation. Every obstacle they've ever faced, every place they've ever been, each win and loss, high and low, would we dare go beyond a glance at their surface? If people are picture books, do we even look inside the cover to uncover the artwork at their hearts? We can reconcile how a photograph can make a mask for a thousand words. How a camera click can conceal the complexities of its subject, but when it comes to people, we don't see through the same lens. Forget to connect the illustration to the narration that made it. And can we really know an individual without truly pouring through what it is that made them possible? Can we remind ourselves of the way a snapshot is the postscript of a parable? If I were a picture book, I'd hope my readers want to hear what the hummingbirds in my hair are all a feather about. What the sunsets on my skin have to say, I'd want them to see my skies and be inspired to ask about my day if I were a picture book. I'd want anyone who takes a look to see the forests and be curious enough to proffer questions to each tree. I'd want them to chat with the babbling brook about the truths and fictions of me. I'd want them to try and see just how extraordinary my planes can be. I'd want them to read between the lines and decode the colors to find all the words that help define me. Now we just witnessed the visual art aspect of Firefly. Now next, we will feature music and fashion, which we have combined for an exciting presentation. Now, each act will be accompanied by the High Synergy Band. Opening this segment is fusion artist Lee Phillips performing an original piece entitled Sunrise. Now Lee is paired with and outfitted by the resort wear brand Black Flamingo Apparel. Yeah, whoa. Flower channel, let them deceive you. Don't believe them when they try to turn you cold. There will be pain, heavy rain. I promise you go on. Thanking all this on you need to feed you. That strength within you'll never be alone. Make love your home, peace your throne, feel it all in. Close your eyes, but hurt aside, stay open to love. Stay open to love. Close your eyes, put heart aside. Stay open to love. Stay open to love. Smiling with the sunrise. Yeah, keep smiling with the sunrise. Keep on 
fall heavy, heavy, heavy. Sunrise comes to the people when they're ready. Flower child holds me positively steady. Shine down on me, the blessings fall heavy. Flamingo Apparel. That was absolutely phenomenal. Now, coming up next, we have Jabari Brown performing school books. Now, he is paired with fashion designer Unparalleled, who specializes in streetwear. My school books, making tracks on a map just to get the looks, the looks, and the looks where them come in, right? To be a tiger in the woods, you got to earn your strength. If she breaks my heart, that would be nothing new. Can't keep a woman longer than a snow cone, boo. If the snow cone melt before you tell the truth, the way you move, that will be your proof. It's time to rise up, I can burn out the booth. The subject and the verb agree to unite the youth. We're just bars, and who knows, I could be a star. Doesn't matter to me, just wanna be where you are. Hey, Barbados to the world, talking green monkey. And I don't own no pearls, I might fly with birds You're threatened by me, I could grab your purse Smack your curse, rattle off a little bit If you don't read, buddy, then you should not spit If you track, will you mumble, don't bother with it I have a hand, time to shit, spirit in this Ha! Whoa, whoa, ho, ho, ho Cooler than the naked man in the snow Hotter than the boiling catches, whoa Which tell you join my crew, but you swimming too slow Swim to me, don't get hit by the wave I tell as fast, cause it's you love that they crave And when the hook come in, I don't feel Watch my pen drop, hey, yeah. Watch my pen drop, yeah. Watch my pen drop, ha, chicka. Watch my pen drop, give me say no. Watch my pen drop, watch my pen drop, watch my pen drop, watch my pen drop. Listen, listen. I see the boy singing straight from the fields and hills. I see the boy who accustomed to the rust and bust. I see the boy cooking rappers from the outside grill. You ain't raised up. I 
unparalleled. Thank you so much. That was absolutely phenomenal. Now, before our final act, we would like to thank UNCTAD and the Global Services Forum for allowing BCSI this opportunity to showcase some of our emerging local creatives. Now, we recognize the need to develop the services sector, and this opportunity highlights that linkages can be formed to add value to our creative sector. Now, this production would not have been possible without the support of our sponsors. Here we go. The Ministry of Culture, National Cultural Foundation, Central Bank of Barbados, West Indies Rum, Coscap, and the Exchange Interactive Center. Thank you very much to the Barbados Museum, of course, Marnico Media, and the entire production team who made today a success. Now, for our final act, we have soca artist Shanta Prince singing Throw Wine. Now, Shanta is paired with bespoke fashion brand Mac Gias.
Ashanta and Matt Gs. Now, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show. On behalf of the BCSI, thank you for viewing the Firefly Cultural Exhibition. To further explore the work of the artists featured in this exhibition, make sure you go to fireflybarbados.com. And of course, I was your host, Vane, and it was absolutely my pleasure.